Everybody hear me back there? No? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Did everybody successfully process cases M2 and M3 in the search and run the FCI search and you understand <clears throat> the difference you're getting from the PC search? Okay. So now I want to apply the, um, the latent variable model uh, searches and the basic perspective um, to show you that regression, right, uh, is really the wrong tool if I have latent variables. <clears throat> okay, so I think it's really safe to say that even though we've known for a long time that um, there are better techniques in multiple regression that in the great majority of methods courses in social sciences and statistics today, right, when causation is brought up, the typical experimental strategy is clear, right, you randomize and then you actually look at whether there's an association between the uh, thing you randomize and the effect you're looking at, and that's pretty straightforward and it's not changed and that's okay. <clears throat> but when you don't have an experiment and you want to do something non-experimental, the advice is still, right, worry about the possible confounders, measure and control for them or adjust for them statistically. So <clears throat> the first thing is let's establish some prima facie case where X might be your putative cause and Y your effect. And if they're associated, that's evidence that there might be all right, some causal relation. And, and then you have the worry that they might be associated uh, because there's confounding. And so what to do about the confounding is essentially right, <clears throat> identify and measure potential confounder Z. Uh, and the restriction is make sure those confounders are prior to X that they're associated with X, and then they're associated with Y. So if you find variables, or you can conceive of variables that satisfy these three conditions, then you should put them into a regression as covariates. Right? That is the advice that uh, people get in <coughs> methods courses throughout the world. I think it's safe to say. OK? And there's lot lots of other ways to statistically adjust for a variable, but the, the, the most common way is multiple regression in some form or the other. And so for our purposes, I will just use that as the, uh, the, the whipping boy or the, the straw man to, to, to rail against. Okay. So it turns out that multiple regression or any strategy is provably unreliable uh, to find out whether X causes Y with covariates, right, unless X is truly prior to Y. And, and here's the key one, that between the X and Y and the confounder Z, right, those set of variables are themselves causally sufficient. And what that means is <clears throat> that once I've identified the confounder Z, that there are no more confounders between X and Z and Z and Y, or between even the variables in Z themselves, okay? Okay, so I'm going to now go back to Tetrad and demonstrate and show you why this is right, an unreliable strategy, and then leave it to you to do your, do your own verification. Oops. Okay, so let's build a graph. And in my graph, I'm going to have three variables. That might be either causes of y, I'll make x to be the key guy. So my question is going to be, is X a direct cause of Y? And Z1 right, will be a potential, potential confounder, and Z2 
will be a potential confounder. But as you can see, Z2 and X are themselves confounded by L1, right? And then Z2 and Y are themselves confounded by uh, L2. Now, in the way I've set this up, it's not necessary, but it's certainly possible and plausible, right, that Z1 satisfies all those conditions. It's prior to X, right? It's associated with X and it's associated with Y. And Z2 can satisfy the same conditions. It's, it still can be prior to X in time, right? And it's going to be associated with X and it's going to be associated with Y, right? So if this is the true model and you were trying to do science and determine whether X was in fact the cause of Y using this strategy that I just outlined, each of these possible confounders, Z1 and Z2, would be something you would think about and insert in your regression as covariates and adjust for statistically. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Say build a parametric model, right? build an instantiated model, put data. So I only have data on the Z1, X, Z2, and Y. Don't have the latents. Now if I do a regression, I say make Y the response and make X the predictor, and I just look at that, right, X turns out to be highly significant. But if I put in Z1 and Z2, what I should be able to find, if I'm using a technique that's reliable, as this is my true graph, what should I see in the regression if this is a reliable technique? X will no longer be significant because even though it's a prima facie right, cause of Y, it's not an actual cause of Y. The true graph, it doesn't have any influence on Y. Right? So if I'm going to control for Z1 and Z2, I ought to detect that once I control for those guys, X and Y are no longer associated, right? and they are detectably not related causally. So that's the hope. Now if I go back and I actually execute this regression, unless my data are weird, which is possible, they're not, <clears throat> you can see what you get here. Right? X is still significant, right, at 0.02, Z1 is significant at 0, and so is Z2. So what you should conclude, right, if the regression is to be taken in causal terms seriously, is that yeah, X is a cause of Y. And here's the size of it, it's negative. Right. So this is not a sample size problem. If I increase the sample size, this gets worse. Right? It's a population problem because it's the wrong test. And what's happening and why is because right, if I'm trying to separate x from y and screen it off with confounders that might actually explain the association, I have to control for z1 because z1 is a common cause of both, and it's going to produce association. But why is it that I should not control for Z2? I should not put Z2 in as a co covariate. It's a collider. It's a collider on the path. So there's a path from X to Y that goes this way, this way, this way, this way. L1 and L2 can't be measured. So on that path, there's only one variable that's measured, and it's a collider. And everything else is a non-collider. So in the beginning, before I condition, right, active, inactive, active. And once I condition on this, I activate it. So I screw myself up. I, I actually mislead right, the causal estimate by including this. So let's see if there's anything better we could do. So if we did, in fact, leave out Z2, right, and then run the regression again, now we can see we screened off X appropriately. 
and z1 is the only variable that we should include in the regression to do it. But then the question is, how do we know that? So I've given you the basic conditions that you're going to be told in the methods classes that all students take, right? But how do we know that z1 is to be included, but z2 is not? So now instead, I'm going to do an FCI search. And here's what I get in the FCI search. Okay, so what do you notice from the FCI search right here, right? Well, let's look at all the connections one at a time. So the Z1X connection, right, don't know what's happening at that end, but it's definitely into X, so X is not an ancestor of Z1. Well, that's correct, right? Z1Y, same thing, that's correct. The XZ2, it says there's a latent common cause I've left out. Yes, that's correct, there it is. And the YZ2, there's a latent common cause I've left out. That's correct, there it is. So this is how much information I can get about the causal structure by doing causal search and allowing for latent variables, right? So I've gotten the PAG, which is extremely informative, right, where regression is not. And this PAG will tell me, in very simple ways, that because Z2 is the only variable on this path and it's a collider, that if I want to estimate the effect of x on y, even if there is an edge there, I cannot include z2 because it biases the estimate. Okay? But you don't have to actually estimate anything in this model to understand or to infer that x is not a cause of y. Right? If anything, right, <clears throat> um, it's a sink, which is to say it's not a cause of anybody among these variables. So you, you can learn a lot from the PAG search Right, that you can't learn from regression. Yeah? No, the, the core question in the regression is that is there any really lateral relationship between the x and y here? Right. So it means that, so primary you need to, to, to start with the unit in your model, in your, your DAG, with the x to y relationship. If you add the x to y relationship and do the search, what happens? that's cut away. So the X and Y relationship is found to not exist. Right? Because the, the, the way that works is if any set makes X and Y independent, that we take away the adjacency from X and Y. And so the set that includes just X, Z1, makes these guys independent. So we take the adjacency away. The problem comes if we try to actually only look at X and Y conditional on both of these guys at the same time then we keep the adjacency in there fallaciously. And, so, and that's what regression is al always looking at the relationship between an input and the response conditional on all the other regressors. And in this case, you can't do that without being misled. So the search, that w the causal structure search, tries every possible subset to separate X and Y, not just the subset of all the regressors. It tries one regressor at a time, and then two regressors in every set, then three, et cetera. And it will discover when it tries Z1 alone that that deseparates X and Y, and so it will eliminate the adjacency. So that's the difference between the regression and the causal search. Okay, so I feel like if you guys actually understand this, if you understand deseparation enough to understand that, right, this is, this is right, that's, that's an inducing path, it, it, it creates association in regression, then I've succeeded. So if you understand why this is happening and why this is sort of <clears throat> uh, uh, the kind of output you, you could get or why regression fails in this, then, then, then that's, a, that's good. So any questions? So let's pause here for a second and really ask, does anybody have any questions about this? Yeah. So you might have gotten different data. So regenerate the data because I just generate data randomly and sometimes the data will not Right, give you the statistical decisions you, 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 you want. Or, or increase the sample size. Okay, so everybody is pretty clear on what's going on here? Now, what does, just for curiosity to go all the way back to the beginning of this workshop, 
what does this sort of look like to you of the models we've considered and looked at? Does this ring a bell with any of the cases I presented? It's the Timberlake and Williams case, right? Where this variable is foreign investment and this variable is, right, political exclusion and the regression showed they're connected, right, as everything was, but our search showed a structure just like this where foreign investment was, if anything, a sink, right, and was only related to the other guy through latent common causes. So this is actually very similar, almost the same structure as Timberlake and Williams, we found. And so, fortuitously, it turns out that I believe that that's a really good example of why regression doesn't work for causal inference, unless you can really say for sure that there are no latent common causes you've left out, which here are detectably in, 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 in the picture. Okay. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is actually go ahead and duplicate what I've done so you make sure you can find, you, you can generate data from this kind of a graph and then run the FCI and the regression on it so you can, you, you, you can reproduce this analysis. Because I think this is extremely important to take home and show all your friends and your students. So let's stop for five, ten minutes. Go ahead and do this analysis, right? Um, but I, 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 in, in step four, I should say do the regression, not, not execute the PC search. Okay, and I'll